Good morning. Just a few things we have to figure out up here, but we got it figured out. Welcome to Cherry Grove Church of the Nazarene. We're glad you're worshiping with us. Let's all stand and worship in singing today. Have a couple old southern gospel ones. I'll fly away.
I think Ken has a couple things to say about Project Christmas this morning. Good morning. Good morning. <laughs> um, I've got a PowerPoint here about Project Christmas just to help explain a little more about Project Christmas, what goes on there. And um, so, Paul, if you wouldn't, next. Um, that one is information about Project Christmas. If we were established in 1989, it was, I think, like five ladies got together in 1989, decided that, uh, you know, Project Christmas was something that they wanted to promote in Cadillac. And so they started that up just sitting around. Uh, the uh, table, kitchen table, drinking coffee. Um, all funds raised for this event, donated from the community. We, um, you know, everything just comes right here from local community, uh, businesses, and just people like us in this church. Uh, families in need from Wexford, Missaukee County is the counties that we uh, have that uh, use Project Christmas, and that gives you the numbers from Last year, 854 families, 2,728 individuals. All right, Paul. Um, this tells us uh, some of the items that we are looking for for Project Christmas. I don't know if you've noticed, but I set the boxes out now. And each four, we four year, there is a box for food and for gifts and other items. And uh, that just kind of tells you what we are looking for. Gift toy for every child under 18, pair of new socks and underwear. This is what we are giving out, obviously. Uh, household gift, um, one book per child in the house, clothing, and uh, that's generally, gently used or new clothing is what we're looking for. Hats and mittens, uh, pajamas, socks, gently used, like I said, uh, the clothing, and stuffed animals. Um, this is the, as it says, perishable consumables uh, that we give out for each household. Uh, laundry soap, dish soap, bar soap, toothbrushes. Um, that's per person, they get a toothbrush, um, toothpaste, toilet paper, meat, potatoes, canned vegetables, peanut butter, and canned tuna. And we are asking this year to try and um, give as much um, canned tuna fish, peanut butter, you know, as we can get more than just the uh, canned vegetables and things like that. Um, so that's kind of what we are looking for. All right. Okay, wonder how you can help. Okay, well, um, this is, uh, it's more set up for businesses, this slide here. It just tells you the different programs that we have going as um, people donate. And I mean, people can donate, of course, up to this much if they want. But uh, the donations is open for just however much you want to give. And we are really in need this year, uh, it seems like, uh, for more donations because we have lost some of our sponsorship and some of the grants that we had I have gone away it's just you know the way of the world is things just start disappearing and you just have to go out and kind of like I'm doing right now and kind of try and get people uh, interested in it you know so um, so that's our uh, for the uh, gifts that uh, is given and as it says on their businesses but individuals can give too you know um, I know that's an awful lot to give but anyway um, as far as the giving goes uh, it, if uh, people want to give also just individually, you can just write a check out to Project Christmas. And uh, in the foyers on the tables back there, I do have um, one of these letters that is back there and it's got an address. There's an address on here where you can send a check or if you wanted, I mean, you could just write out a check to Project Christmas and give it to me. and. Uh, and I will turn that in for you. Um, all right, Paul. Um, yeah, this is talking about our volunteers 
and of course, you know, it's pretty self-explanatory. We are always looking for more volunteers, and we have several different people in the church here now that are running tables. Um, so I, I run the parking lot and uh, recycling program and several, several other uh, things for Project Christmas. And um, we have Bobby Fuller and Gary Fuller over here. Would you guys get up, stand up, please? Uh, they are um, in our hats and mittens table now. Um, they are co-chairs with somebody else for that. So, uh, and if anybody is interested in doing anything for hats and mittens, you can talk to them. Um, they would even accept money for it, I suppose. But uh, <laughs> uh, she has a, a sign-up sheet also in the four years for that if you wanted to help in her booth for them. So there's that. Um, and like I said, we are always in need of volunteers. So, uh, yep, all right, that's good. Thank you, Paul. Uh, contact information, and that's the uh, Brandon Sutton is more of a, if you want to donate money, you could call him about that, or our Project Christmas phone number is on there. But like I said, this, this letter pretty much explains it and gives you all that information also to try and take it off of a screen like this. I know it's pretty hard to do. So, um, anything more? Okay, this is our mission statement, um, to share the spirit of Christmas and community caring with those in need through a collaborative community-wide effort. And uh, we thank you from Project Christmas and appreciate any help that you can give us. I think that's it. All right, thank you. Good morning. This morning I'd like to speak with you a little bit on missions. Um, first off, uh, for in October we had the crisis care kits out and I would like to extend a huge thank you to everyone who filled up a crisis care kit bag and brought that back. We shipped out two boxes of care kits. Um, and also, um, the first Sunday of the month, which is today, we are showing video of different mission activities around the world. It could be in other countries or in another state in America. And we're, that's our mission moments focus. We as a church send funds for the World Mission Fund and to help those people out. The greatest help for the missionaries is for everybody to pray. There are people in um, critical areas where it cannot be known why they're there or what they're doing. Um, a verse from the Bible I picked out, and I saw another angel fly in the midst of heaven, having the everlasting gospel to preach unto them that dwell on the earth into every nation and kindred and tongue and people. Revelation 14, 6. So whether your heart is called to help a family member in the church, somebody in the community, somebody across the states, or somebody around the globe, the biggest thing that helps is prayer. Thank you. And fifteen, like I was, I start feeling like I wanted to do something else than just attending to Sunday services. So I heard about all the projects that Empower was doing. So I went to Greece and I was there for three months. 
In Greece, we were in north of Greece, in Thessaloniki, close to Thessaloniki. So we were working with refugees in camps. For the past three months, I was in uh, Kolkata. And that was in a CDC in Lakshmi Kanpur. So we helped in the CDC. We were working as teachers there, and I was given in charge of the first grade. I heard in Nepal itself 144 churches are here in Nepal itself and God is opening me to serve and all the churches and it was my desire not only in only one church to serve as a missionary. I want to help different different churches to encourage to everyone. The idea was that we wanted to create opportunities for people from Eurasia region uh, to be involved in cross-cultural missions. It has very much to do with what Jesus says in Matthew 28 when he says to all his disciples, therefore go and make disciples of all nations. So it's not just for people from the West, it's a message to every culture and to every Christian in every culture, that there are these last words of Jesus, uh, which ask us to go beyond where we are, whether it is in our communities, in people that we have not read, yet reached, whether it is in our district, in becoming involved with a different church plant, or whether it is to actually go to a different culture, a different district, and to see how God is working there, but also to, be, to assist the mission that is taking place there. few ushers come forward to bring our morning, morning tithes and offerings. Dad, can we pray for the offering this morning? So, so good. 
Oh, you won't light up. Mount, you won't climb up. Coming after me. Snow wall, you won't kick down. Lie, you won't tear down. Coming after me. No shadow, you won't light up. Mount, you won't climb up. Coming after me. No wall, you won't kick down. Lie, you won't tear down. Coming after me. No shadow, you won't light up. Mount, you won't climb up. Coming after me. No wall, you won't kick down. Lie, you won't tear down. Coming after me. There's no shadow, you won't light up. Mount, you won't. No wall you won't kick down, fly you won't tear down, coming after me. I don't think we need a sermon. I think he just blessed our souls off. Let's give him another round of applause. <laughs> Let's all take a couple minutes to greet our neighbor, and then we'll start up with our next group of songs. Thank you, Elijah. As we're getting back to our seats, if you would, remain standing if you're able. This I believe.
Give life. 
feel overwhelmed by the darkness in our world right now. Broken families, incurable illnesses, unspeakable tragedy. Sometimes the darkness feels so big, but God promises us that it won't be like this forever. Revelations 21, 3, 4 says, Look, God's dwelling place is now among the people, and he will dwell with them. They will be his people, and God himself will be with them and be their God. He will wipe away every tear from their eyes. There will be no more death or mourning or crying or pain, for the old order of things has passed away. There is a day coming. No more tears. No more fear, no more pain, no more heartache, and no more darkness. But until that day comes, we can cling to the truth that God's light is greater than the darkness. One day all that's wrong will be set right. The darkness we experience today can't stop his light from shining through. Declare with us today, God's light is greater than the darkness.
tell it, but every hair on my head is standing straight up in the air this morning. God is great. He is here. This room feels fabulous this morning. And you brought it in with you today when you showed up. Isn't God good? My goodness sakes, is he ever good. And so we're trusting that goodness and that greatness to carry us through every aspect of life. But this is why we come to church, is for this right here. Amen? Terry, if you would, would you come? I know we've anointed Bob before, but Bob... Uh, Bob's not with us today, Bob Rubis. He's got to start his chemo on Tuesday, got his port in Friday, and is in a lot of pain today and was going to try to get to be here, but uh, just could not make it. Uh, I want you to gather around, Terry, if you would, and pray. I was thinking yesterday, we're going to talk. We're talking about all the things that we, be, that we believe in, and we're going to talk about uh, baptism and communion today. But I thought about healing, and I thought, okay, Mike, it took me one prayer to get saved. God saved me in an instant when I prayed that one time. I don't have to beg God to do anything. God's a strong God who can do it right now. In fact, he does it without me asking. But I'm thankful for the times when we have to gather around and, and just lay our hearts out to him and say, Lord, move. And there's times we have to do that today. It's a precious couple that we love with all our heart. And we're going to pray. When you pray, you, you spouses that know, many of you right around you here right now know what it's like to be with your mate when they're sick and dealing with cancer and dealing with chemo. We've unfortunately had way too much experience around here of that. And so we're going to pray for them today as Bob starts this journey and pray for Terry together. Amen. As my old pastor used to say, pray like it's you that's doing it and dealing with it. Father, we love you today. In the name of Jesus, greater than all names, above all names, worthy of all praise, we thank you for who you are what you do greater than we could ever imagine or dream up in any fantasy we could ever try. I thank you that you're the maker of these bodies. You're the, the one that controls all things. And for this couple that we love more than we could ever say, what a joy they are, the joy that they bring, the, the service and the generosity and the servant heart that they, they have. But right now, God, they're walking through a door that so many of us uh, right here in this church know what it's about. It's an unfortunate thing to deal with cancer like so many have. And I know today, Bob would much rather be right here, uh, have his hands in the air, praising his God and uh, being with his church family. But I know where he's uh, at today, at home, he hurts. His body may hurt, but I, what we pray for most of all is a healing of his spirit and his mind and his soul to continually look to you. And above everything else, it goes without saying, but I'm going to pray it at this moment. We want you to touch his body and eradicate any speck of disease in his body right now. We know you can take that, that uh, pancreas that they say is metastasized and make it whole again. And you can touch his liver and you can touch his lungs. You're, you're more than capable of that because you put it together. You're the maker of that. But God, we're not going to not believe in you anymore if that doesn't happen. It's not a results religion that we live in. God, if you'll take care of me, I'll serve you. He already has taken care of us. But we pray for this family now because maybe there's a reason for this, for us to gather around them closer. Maybe he's going to be a blessing to those at the hospital and the doctors and that he's with. Maybe just maybe this is another way for you to show them how much you love them and how you're going to carry them. For Terry, I pray God, she said the other day, she just feels helpless not knowing what to do. And so many in this room can relate to that. And I pray for her that maybe there's just times she just has to hold his hand. You know, maybe there's times she just has to say, hey, Bob, I love you. Maybe there's times you just need to take your arms and wrap them around her. So we just ask you to take care of them today. We know you're the great physician, and there's nothing you can't do. So take care of this today. What our goal would be, God, is that he would get there for chemo. And as I'm sure he's going to be making fun of everybody in the hospital as he sits down in his chair and uh, cracking jokes and doing what he does, it would be just like you for them to look and say, there's no need for you to need this anymore and send him home. But we care about this family, so we just ask you to take care of it today. In Jesus' name, and amen. Years ago, I used to always preach with a hanky, and it used to drive Cheryl nuts because I would always wipe the corners of my mouth so much with it that it looked like I just ate a bag of red peppers or something. In my life, my mouth would just glow, but it was because my eyes leaked all the time. That's not crying, Todd. We're men, right? But my eyes would leak a lot. Uh, man, I could go for that hanky today, that's for sure, because I have felt the Lord all over this room this morning, amen? And Elijah... 
I don't know where his CDs are. Is he, has he got any made yet? Because that dude has got it. Whatever it is, he found it, and he's not sharing it with anybody. Amen? I appreciate him so much for that. I want him to be able to remember at a point in his life that uh, the church didn't tell me to be quiet and go sit in the corner until I turned 18 or until I got a job or started shaving. Everybody's got something to share in the church. Amen? And so we're thankful for that. Good morning. Do not let the side clocks bother you. It is not 10 to 1. But now that does mean it's like 10 to 12. And for you noon people that go non-spiritual at 12.01, I don't know what to tell you. I really don't know what to tell you. But um, it is good to see you here today. Let me just make two quick announcements and then we'll, we'll move on with the service. But first of all, Rachel Decker and her twin sons and her daughter, I guess Angel probably went in the back too, right? They're all back in kids' row, but it's such a dear, dear, sweet, Jesus-filled friends of ours. Thankful that they're here today. And her parents right there on the end. Make sure they're collecting taxes for this side. So make sure you guys uh, pay your dues as you walk over that side. Anybody get candy tax from your kids this weekend? You know? When the, all the stuff that happened, we had more candy left over than we started. The, the loaves and fishes happened again back here Thursday night, I think. Um, so I was looking at that thinking, well, nobody will mind if I take a couple things here and there. And that's why I'm wearing this maternity top today, if I came to church. Um, so, but it's a good place to be. Pete and Virginia back with us here again today. Pete, he's, he's got, yeah, he's, he's got the headset on. But I bet it's tuned to the Lions game, really, when it starts over here, probably. Uh, Virginia gave me a note. Pete would like to thank everyone for all the prayers and the cards while he had a broken ankle. And then he was sick for the past year and a half. Thanks so much. And I know that's from the heart. Pete said, I, I think it looks like I'm back. Well, he waited till winter to get back. By the way, what's up with the weather? I have no idea, but oh well. We live in Michigan, not Florida, right? But um, good to see you. Good to see you. And then little Kelly and Josh over here and right behind grandma and grandpa wolf uh i feel like grandpa remember on hee haw what's for supper i'm just looking around the room talking to everybody but it's good to see you guys proud of them what they're doing in charleston west virginia telling people about jesus you know they need jesus in west virginia you ever met anybody from there you know they really need them don't they i got plenty of friends over there they're going to hit me up right now with that aren't they is god faithful can't say that without saying all the time can you thank you for all that you've done for us as a family if they if you don't stop though I'm either going to need insulin or I'm going to have the biggest head that won't ever fit in a door and it continues today Chuck pastor appreciation month is finally over so he's happy doesn't have to appreciate me anymore but you keep bringing food and cards and today I got a piece of tape here that says Jesus loves you that's a great reminder and and they put this one up here Somebody did. Who did? Was that Morgan? Did you put that one up there, Morgan? Yeah, that's what I figured. It says something about me being awesome. Well, thank you for telling me what I already know, first of all. But then, um, but it's up here, so I can't see it. I guess that's for my pride, right? So I can't look at it, Pastor Wolf. Um, we believe in plenty of things. I'm glad we sang that song this morning. We're back to what we've read, the same text as we move into the 2 Timothy 4, 1 through 5. And this week now today, again, we say, what does... Paul tell Timothy, you can again recite it, I charge you in chapter 4, uh, verses 1 through 5, in the presence of God and Christ Jesus, who is to judge the living and the dead, and by his appearing in his kingdom, preach the word, not your opinion, not what you heard on the radio coming to church, not what you find on the interweb, but preach the word. Be ready in season, out of season. Pastor Wolf, what's that mean? Well, that means whether you feel like it or not, you still got to live the life and say what God lays on your heart. Amen? Whether you're scared to death, reprove, rebuke, exhort with complete patience and teaching. What is it that we're doing? Here we are. Here's the verse. I hope you've got this one down in your heart by now. The time is coming when people will not endure sound teaching, but having itching ears, they will accumulate for themselves teachers to suit their own passions. I hope after two months of this, your awareness is raised even a little bit more, even about your own life, to think, am I just surrounding myself with people that just put tape on my shirts that tell me I'm awesome? Thank you, Morgan. It was a perfect example right there. That's good encouragement, isn't it? I like to think that I can encourage people at their time of need. But, Pat, there are some times when the truth is medicine. Medicine is good for us, and we need it. Somebody's got to put us in line. Now, for all of us that think my spiritual gift is telling everybody what's wrong with them, I'm sorry, that's not how it works. 
well my spiritual no it's not listen you don't get to pick right somebody asked me when we did this long ago and they were kidding and they're not here today so I can pick on them but when we were doing the spiritual gift surveys they said so can I just flip to the back and pick the ones I want and put a 10 next to all of them I said you could then you need to go back at the start and work on your humility that would be good we don't get to pick but I am thankful I told God today coming to church I said I'm going to serve you till I die wherever you want me brother Dave brother Dave and sister Mary good to have you guys today I'm going to serve you till I die amen I met it with a couple. We uh, had pastor's retreat in, in uh, Frankenmuth this weekend. Got to sit around the table with six different uh, couples, and two of them said the same thing. We retired, and yet we're pastoring again. Hello. We retired, yet we're pastoring again. I said, what does that mean? They said, the fire never goes out. The fire won't go out, Pastor Dave, until I go out. Amen? I'm still going to find a way to do it somehow or another, but they said, we retired, and all of a sudden, the phone kept ringing. And we couldn't quit. I said, well, God must not have been done with you yet. Amen? So he says, I will turn away from listening to the truth and wander off into myths. That's what happens to people today in our world where we are. And then as for you, always be sober-minded, endure suffering, do the work of an evangelist, and fulfill your ministry. And so that's where we all are, not just me, not just those of you with a call to preach or the call to carry the word or call to ministry or a call to be in missions thank you becky for reminding us of that and thank you for project christmas at this time of year because it's a way for all of us to do something and you never fail to leave there just feeling thankful for what you have and having the opportunity to share and to give amen my thing is always the door i don't know if they put me there so that i can i usually i slide in i'm always it seems like i'm always either relieving gary or somebody else. So when I get in there, Chris Latimer is always the one that comes in behind me. Did I, I think I may have relieved you once, but you came in behind me one time. And the good thing about Chris, he's always 20 minutes early. So he shows up and he's like, well, I don't have anything else to do. Can I just take over? Yes, you can. Because it's 85 below out there. That's why. And I keep opening and shut. Open and shut, you know. Open and shut. But there I stand. But you know what my, my greatest part of that is, as we lead into what we're talking about today, is serving takes a lot of different places. Serving has a lot of different forms and hats. There's so many ways to serve, Bert, that there's no way we could list them all. And yet, when my eyes are on the one that I've had great conversations with this week, Jesus Christ, my Savior, I remember, Mike, he's the ultimate servant. He showed us how to serve. If anybody had a right to say, wait a minute, do you know who I am? You want me to do what? Do you know where I came from? Your voice always goes up three octaves when you have an attitude, apparently. Do you know who I am? I'm the son of God. And he said that, didn't he, Carol? But he didn't say it in a way where, don't come over, there's two foot of space. Don't come near me. He said it because he made people realize, Carol King, I came to serve, not be served. I came to lay my life down for other people, not for them to come around and nudge up to me and try to kiss up and get somewhere. Amen? That's not what it's about. And so Jesus shows us this morning two things that we talk about and what we believe as a church. We're going to follow him and we're going to remember him in these actions, Terry, that he shows us today that our church hangs its hat on. Um, in following and remembering him, Hebrews 2, 6 through 11 says this, it has been testified somewhere, what is man that you are mindful of him or the son of man that you care for him? You made him for a little while lower than the angels. And you have crowned him with glory and honor. You've crowned Jesus with him, putting everything in subjection under his feet. Now in putting everything in subjection to him, he left nothing outside of his control. At present, we do not yet see everything in subjection to him. We know he owns all things and he handles all things, but I, still, I don't see everything, nor would I want to see everything. But we see him for who a little while was made lower than the angels, namely Jesus, crowned with glory and honor because of the suffering of death so that by the grace of God he might taste death for everyone if you don't love him for anything love him for that that he took your sins to Calvary for it was fitting that he for whom and by all things exist in bringing many sons to glory should make the founder of their salvation perfect through suffering for he who sanctifies and those who are sanctified all have one source that is why he is not ashamed to call them brothers thankful to be a part of the family this morning amen what does that mean and following him in being 
a follower of Christ, it means that I'm following the trail, Robbie, that he lays out ahead of me, and he already has laid out a long time ago, but he is showing me how to do what my next step requires. He already showed us on Calvary, amen? Showed us how to die, showed us how to lay our lives down, but then he showed us how to deal. If you go look through the, the short span of his life recorded in the Bible, there's a lot there. He dealt with know-it-alls. Anybody get to deal with know-it-alls? The Pharisees. And there's proof, I've said this a lot, there's proof that they had children because they're still around. They're everywhere. There's not a shortage of people to tell you you're doing it wrong. Amen? Learn that phrase from the treasure over there. Right? There's no shortage of people that will tell you that's not how Jesus would have done it. Well, you know, Dan, if it's in the Bible, that's the only way I know how he did it. And so I'm going to read that, and I'm going to ask him, Lord, how would you handle this? How would you handle that? When he look at his life, I will follow him everywhere. I will follow him until the ends of the earth, Gary, and I will follow him wherever he leads me, whatever he tells me to do. So Hebrews says, it is why he's not ashamed to call us brothers. We are not just subjects to him. Brock, we're not his royal subjects. We are his children. And he has already gone before us and taken everything we will take. But then I look over in 1 Peter 2, 1 Peter 2, 21 and 25. For to this you have been called, because Christ also suffered for you, leaving you an example so that we may what? Follow in his steps. He committed no sin. Can anybody else say that? Raise your hand. I'm still waiting. Right? Bueller? <laughs> Bueller? No! He committed no sin, neither was deceit found in his mouth. Didn't know how to. But when he was reviled, he did not revile in return. There's a year's worth of sermons. When he suffered, he did not threaten, but continued entrusting himself to him who judges justly. He himself bore our sins in his body on the tree that we might die to sin, live to righteousness, but here's what I'm thankful of, that by his wounds, we are healed. Josh, he took them for me. He took them for you, that we're healed. That's the healing we claim for Bob today. It's the healing we claim for all of the sick. It's the healing we claim for the sins of the world. Tony, if it's all that we claim, that, that's not a, a God for this and a God for that like they had in Rome and in Greece and different places back in the day. That is one God who does it all. Amen. I am thankful for that. For you were straying like sheep, but now have returned to the shepherd and overseers of your soul. So that talks about that we remember how to get back to where we need to go. And that verse reminds me in uh, 1 Peter 2.25 that there's a time that we stray. We tend to get off the beaten path. We kind of chase a rabbit or two in our lives at times. You make fun of me for doing it because I do it in public. I can't hide it. It's a, It's a... I would like to call that a spiritual gift. I can't find it in here anywhere. That's the only thing that frustrates me. But things get my attention. You know, okay, I can be walking along. And I go, oh, look, here's a pretty leaf. The other day, I was driving back before the leaves disappeared because of this beautiful stuff. And there was a leaf stuck in my wiper. It was the most beautiful thing I ever saw. I almost wrecked looking at it instead of watching the road. I'm like, well, would you look at that? It was yellow uh, near the top and it had two shades of yellow that got brighter as it went up toward the top of the leaf and then from the base to the stem was the brightest most beautiful red I ever saw in my life I mean I almost look huh like this driving I would not recommend that by the way my son's about to go take his test because he can't stand not having his driver's license please do not drive with your mouth open staring off to the side but that's how I would that leaf looks so and I'm like only God could and then it blew away God's like, okay, that's enough. He, he, and, I, and I had a thought like, but I was going to stop and get that one. I was on 131, so it's probably not a good idea. But it was beautiful. And it got my attention to make me realize that's one of how many leaves out there? Don't try to be smart and tell me how many leaves are in the world because I know we don't know that. There's 8 million and 500 billion trillion in my yard right now. But that one, Gary, was unique. It had colors I don't know that any other did. I've never seen a leaf like that before. It's two weeks ago, and I'm still talking about it. But it makes me realize, here I am, and here I am just flowing around, and I'm just made, I'm made the way I am, and that leaf can't help but have the red base and the yellows in it. I can't help be who I am, and you can't help be who you are either, and let's stop trying, Josh. 
Let's just be who we are with Jesus in our heart. So it's two things that the church carries dear in its heart of the sacraments. The first one that we talk about is back to what we believe in. We're stating our beliefs throughout this whole series just so you know what you're walking into. We believe um, wholeheartedly in baptism. Amen? And so we're going to test how spiritually fit you are today. And so we're going out to, uh, uh, where are we going? Lake Tarina today after church, okay? And uh, going to have a baptism for anybody that wants to get baptized in uh, Lake Tarina. Who wants to do that today? Raise your hand. Good, because I was going to have one of you send me pictures of it when I'm at the house. Isn't that funny how we try to put stipulations? If you love Jesus, you'll get baptized outside in the cold. Nope, he gave me a brain, and to honor the brain he gave me, I'm going to wait till we do it inside somewhere, right? Or in Jim and Roxanne's heated pool, go Bubba. But we believe that Christian baptism commanded by our Lord is a sacrament signifying acceptance of the benefits of the atonement of Jesus Christ. It's administered to believers, declarative of their faith in Jesus as their Savior, and it's the full purpose of obedience in holiness and righteousness. It's a great time. And baptism is a symbol of the new covenant. Young children may be baptized upon request of parents or guardians. Sound like I'm, I'm giving you an announcement here. Who shall give assurance of, for them of necessary Christian training? Here's the goal of being baptized. You have ask Jesus into your heart. Every time when we step up to baptize somebody, the very first thing you say, do you know Jesus is your Savior? Have you asked him into your heart? Yes. And it's never a, hmm, I didn't think about that before I asked you if I could get baptized. Huh. Maybe that's why that's what, let me, we need to go home and figure this thing out. It's that assurance. I like knowing something, amen? And so he tells us here, yes, uh, we believe that it's in that. That's part of uh, who we are. That's part of our belief. In fact, Jesus was baptized, amen? Romans 6, 1 through 11, this is not uh, where Jesus was baptized at, but in Romans 6, he says, what shall we say then? Or do we continue in sin that grace may abound? Let me ask you how it feels to be forgiven. That moment when you realize and know all of my past is gone. It's lifted. Woo! That'll make anybody get excited. And there's that moment when the disciples were talking to Jesus at one time, they're like, hey, Dave, let's go ask Jesus. Don't go anywhere. I'm going to go sin so I can get forgiven because, man, that feels awesome. He's like, you don't have to do that. Being full of the Spirit is a whole lot more fun than having to keep getting forgiven for sin, although it feels pretty awesome to be forgiven for sin. He says, by no means. How can we who died to sin still live in it? Do you not know that all of who have been baptized into Christ were baptized into his death? Now, follow this. We were buried, therefore, with him by baptism into death in order that just as Christ was raised from the dead by the glory of the Father, we too might walk in newness of life. For if we have been united with him in a death like his, we shall certainly be united with him in a resurrection like his. I always think of that part, Pastor Dave, when we're baptizing, united with him in death. When we go under the water, we're saying the old person that scoundrel, that rascal, Janet Graham. Can you imagine Janet Graham without Jesus in her heart? How, what a, what a scoundrel she had to have been, you know? And we die, <laughs> we die to sin, and we lay down in the water, and we're done, and that person that used to be the sinner, that used to live for self, that used to be full of nothing but what they wanted, is dead and put to rest into death. It says our old self was crucified with him in order that the body of sin might be brought to nothing so that we would no longer be enslaved to sin. Hello. For one who has died has been set free. Quit wrestling with it and give it to God and be set free from sin. Well, Brian, I still deal with it. Yep, we sure will. Thank God for the Holy Spirit and his forgiveness. Amen. If we've died with Christ... We believe that we will also live with him. And that's when we get to raise them up and to smile on their face. And they've signified to the world that what I was is no more. It's who I am right now in the fullness of the Holy Spirit of Jesus Christ. We know that Christ being raised from the dead will never die again. Death no longer has dominion over him. Amen? The death, he died. He died to sin once and for all. But the life he lives, he lives to 
God. Not just, even Jesus didn't just run around Dave Guest doing what he wanted. He still was accountable and reported into the Father. And that's what we had to do as well. You also must consider yourselves dead to sin and alive to God in Jesus Christ. Take a snapshot of that one. Romans 6, 11, that's us. If you know beyond a shadow of a doubt that you are a child of the King, Ted Madison, that you ask him into your heart and you're living for him, you need to live free. You need to live with a smile. You need to not let Debbie boss you around at home anymore now that you're retired and say, you know, she can say, hey, Ted, what do you think about painting the cabinets today? I'll go ask Jesus about that. I didn't tell him to say that, Debbie. He told me to say it out loud, right? No, don't do that. Somebody asked me once, a very close person to me, and they said something I had preached bothered them, somebody in the family. They said, did you aim that at me? And I didn't, because who would do that? You guys ever do that? You ever, I'll unload on the old in-laws today. They came to church. Boy, I'll give them a piece of my mind. That doesn't work, does it? People think we load our own gun, and we don't. But they thought, did you say that to me on purpose? And I said, and I, and I didn't, but I was feeling froggy that day, and it's the last time I ever jumped. And I said, I can't help it if God's convicting you. That probably was not the best thing for me to say. So that ranks up there, Ted, right? But I can't help it if the Holy Spirit gets a hold of people. And when we know that we are dead to sin, but we're alive in Christ, you talk about confidence and power and how we can live this life. There's nothing like it, amen? I love being able to be raised back up again to be something different in him. But baptism doesn't just become, it's not just a symbol. It's not just a, and the water doesn't save us. You can get baptized wherever you want. But it's the symbol. It's the, the act of it. Matthew 3, 13 through 17. I'm throwing a lot of verses at you today. Jesus came from Galilee to the Jordan to John to be baptized by him. John would have prevented him saying, I need to be baptized by you and you come to me, right? I'm going to baptize Jesus. How in the world did I sign up for that? But Jesus answered him and said, let it be so now. It's fitting for us to fulfill all righteousness. And then he consented. God picked you. You're the one that came before me. You're the one that's been telling everybody, there's a guy coming behind me. I'm not worthy to tie his shoes. So you get to baptize me right now. You talk about an honor. Jesus was baptized. Immediately he went up from the water. And what happened? Everybody went home and had fun. Something significant happened. The heavens opened. He saw the Spirit of God descending like a dove. And came resting on him, and what did he say? A voice from heaven. This is, not might be, this is my beloved son whom I'm well pleased. Amen. Everybody around them, if you were there that moment, Pat, that should have erased all doubt, shouldn't it? But baptism, Jesus showed us. Again, here's why we follow him. Because Rachel, he showed us how to do it. So even Jesus said, I'm not going to ask you to do anything that I haven't already done. And baptism shows there's a change on the inside to be done on the outside. Amen? Matthew 2. Here's another part. 28, 16 to 20. The 11 disciples went to Galilee to the mountain which Jesus had directed them. This leads right into some of the most famous verses we'll ever talk about. When they saw him, they worshiped him. Here's the problem. What did some people do? There's always going to be doubt. There's always going to be people that need to be told more than once. And when they saw him, they worshiped, but some doubted. Here's what he told them. He said, all authority in heaven and earth has been given to me, just so you understand. Here's what I want you to do. This is called the what? It's not a trick question, is it? The Great Commission. He's telling us, he's filling us, he's giving us the directive on what to do now because Tommy's fixing to leave here in a little bit. And he says, when I leave, here's what I want you to do. I want you to stand around here like the preacher looking at a leaf on his windshield. I want you to do something. Go, therefore, make disciples of all nations. And then what are they doing in there? Baptizing them. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Teaching them to observe all I have commanded you. And behold, I am with you always, even to the end of the age. The older I get, I love that last part of that verse. I am with you always. So he tells us the process leads to baptism. Thank God. I don't thank God that I just was, but I thank God for the privileges that I've had through baptism, Craig. got to baptize uh, so many members of my family. My sister, my brother, I baptized my kids. I baptized uh, Cheryl when we were dating. I baptized my sister-in-law. I made sure the water was really cold that day when she did that. got to baptize my father-in-law. I thought of that when we, we laid him to rest a few weeks ago. He had come to visit us in Kentucky, and he said, 
you don't know this yet, but you know, I'm coming down there. I want you to baptize me. He told me that that weekend when he showed up. I said, what are you talking about? He said, no. He said, um, I have been, but I want you to baptize me because I want to signify. I had, I've, I've been living for Jesus, but I, I just want to do it even better, and I want you to baptize me. I'm like, Psh, I needed my hanky that day too. You know, There have been great moments, great moments that down over here at the pool, great moments over at Torena, great moments anywhere. You can fill up a five-gallon bucket if you want and get in it. That's what it signifies. I am not who I used to be. I am who Jesus makes me out to be because of his salvation in my heart. Amen? And so to thank him for that, that's the following. Quickly, we talk about the Lord's Supper. We're going to have communion later this month, the last Sunday of the month. Praise God. And it's going to be a great time. I love communion. I love Lois taking the body and the cup to remind us the, just what the table says. This do in remembrance of me. We believe that the communion supper instituted by the Lord is essential as a New Testament sacrament. It shows his sacrificial death through the merits of which believers have life and salvation and promise of all blessing in Christ. It's distinctively for those prepared for reverent appreciation of his significance. Notice that, reverent appreciation. And by it, they show forth the Lord's death till he come again. It being the communion feast, only those who have faith in Christ and love for the saints should be called to participate therein. What does that mean? Do I have to sneeze rainbows? Do I have to have the golden touch? Do I have to have a head of hair like Todd Golnick? The third one is, makes me more mad than the other two does, honestly. No, you do not. But can you take yourself to a moment when you ask Jesus into your heart and ask him to forgive you of your sins? Let's go. I always say if you got hit in the back of the foot with a cart at the store and you got a little perturbed, it doesn't mean you're not saved. It just means you're normal. Now, if you take your cart and ram it into the other person's, then we got a problem. Then don't tell them where you go to church, please. What does he say? Luke 22. Luke 22 tells us this. And here's the writing of that. And we'll make a couple statements and then we'll sing. When the hour had come, he reclined at the table and the apostles with him. See, again, Dave, he's not telling us to do something he hasn't already done. We want to take the body and we want to take the cup and we want to take the bread and, and remember, friend, what he did for us. We wholly believe in that. He said to them, I have earnestly desired to eat this Passover with you before I suffer, for I tell you I will not eat it until it is fulfilled in the kingdom of God. And he took a cup, and when he had given thanks, he said, take this and divide it among yourselves. They all would take the cup and take a drink. For I tell you, that not from now on I will not drink of the fruit of the vine until the kingdom of God comes. And then he says, he took the bread and he gave thanks, he broke it and he gave it to them and said, this is my body which is given for you. I am so thankful that Jesus did the opposite. And I know you hear me say this a quadrillion times. I'm trying to get rid of this thing, aren't you? And put on a glorified one that'll never get sick, that'll never be late, that'll never have a runny nose, that'll never have cancer. Hello? Never have a pain in it whatsoever? I don't really care what it looks like. I just know it'll be perfect, Gary. Amen? And Jesus did the opposite. He left all that to come down to this place so I could be saved. If you don't love him for anything else, love him for that. He said, this is my body. Do this in remembrance of me. And then he says, he took the cup after he had eaten. He said, this cup that's poured out for you is the new covenant of my blood. Why is he telling us to remember what he did? We live in a fast-paced world. We live in a selfish climate. We live in a place where even the church can become a place of man-made and woman-made and uh, even child-made laws. And that's not what it's about. It's about the one that died for us. We follow and remember him. And we make two statements as they come with a song. Communion is a commemoration in accordance with Christ's words. Do this in remembrance of me. If all of this else goes out, and, and fogs up your brain, Pat, and we forget about it. I want you to remember that statement. Every time that we're privileged enough, Gloria, to take the cup and take the bread, remember, someone died for your sins. They didn't have to hog time and threaten him. He willingly came and gave his life, and that man is Jesus. And if this is the first time you've ever heard that, you need to do something about it today. Amen? If you've heard it before, is it still affecting your life? Is it still affecting your decisions and how you carry yourself and how you do business, how you worship? 
if I come in and I'm worshiping and worrying about time and who's next to me and the heat and uh, you know everything else and, and whatever I got else I got going on which is very possible because all of us are human and that happens but it robs the joy I have of being able to tell my Lord thank you for taking care of me for another week communion is that moment and time to remember we're not playing games here it's also a celebration in which we give thanks for our redemption amen thank you Lord for redeeming and saving us so I don't know where you're at today as we stand and to get ready to sing here's where I want to tell you where I feel in my heart God is blessing our church he's blessing it in spite of us <laughs> in spite of me he's blessing what we try to do but it's got absolutely nothing with how creative and how intelligent and how smart we are it's because we are just trying to plug into the almighty all powerful all knowing ever present God who did not ask us to do anything he didn't do already who's not ever going to put you in a position where you're going to be left alone where you're going to be left resourceless he's always going to take care of us and we do two things to remember that when we give our hearts and lives over to him we remember through baptism that I'm not who I used to be thank God and every time we take of his table it's a reminder Dan that hey I am forgiven and I am filled and I remember that every day amen I don't know where you're at I know the world clouds us and we have so much going on we're going to pray and as we sing I just want to challenge you to talk to God in your own way whether it's here or at your seat but thank him think about how blessed you are thank him for how blessed you are and all that you have stop telling him what you don't have he already knows and maybe you don't need it but thank him for what you have and who he is father we love you today grateful for your word grateful for your love and grateful to know that we're in a place that we can be ourselves and know that you are the God of all things and today I just hope we gave you the honor that you deserve in all that we did from our songs and the word our fellowship you tell us your word gets more alive to us every day and we are thankful that you have shown us that please help us today though God to remember all that you've done your sacrifice your life, your love, your provision for us, and then to follow you wherever you lead us. We need not ask. We just need to follow as tough as that is because you're never going to leave us or forsake us and you're never going to put us in a place that you're going to say you're on your own. So talk to hearts today, Father, while we sing it. Thank you for these things we can count on that will never change. In Jesus' name.
announcements just real quick tomorrow night is uh, women's grove and as the bulletin says there is an easy peasy craft pat resignal will tell you what that means i have no idea it's got something to do with the vegetable apparently peasy but um anyway then tonight at mcbain high school there is united it's a night of worship um youth groups from all over the area are going to be there from six to eight um and then uh my group will meet tuesday night um then uh, there's no NYI Wednesday night. Nicole was not able to be here. Pray for Nicole. She's burning the candle at five different ends, I think, in a lot of ways. And uh, the family, that's a busy family, busy mom and dad and, and Jordan. Jordan's got two bedrooms now that uh, Carson left, so there's a lot going on over there. But uh, then the senior lunch is going to be next Thursday, right, Dorothy? At Evergreen, 1 o'clock. Uh, so be much in prayer for that. Cancer support. Cancer Support Group is going to meet next Sunday after church in the gray room uh, just briefly to go over some stuff that we need to take care of. Also, Barb Booth told me she uh, made some more directories, and some of our pictures have changed. Some of you have gotten even more beautiful than you were when we took the first picture. And so, and a lot of you that are new that have come, anybody next Sunday and the Sunday after that, after church, she's going to be out. Paul, do you know she's going to be outside? I hope not, but somewhere inside. Uh, but she's going to take directory pictures for new folks or if you just didn't like your, if you're like me, I've never taken a good picture. So you could take it nine pictures and it wouldn't matter. Uh, but anyway, she'll be doing that the next two Sundays after that. And then the petitions, you got them in both foyers there uh, on the uh, dismemberment ban on that if you'd like to sign those. And thank you so much. So many of you have done that. Uh, they're in both foyers here. Take a look at those and sign those before you uh, leave today. Josh Mays, it is a thrill to have him today. He's going to come and uh, close us in prayer and then after that you're you're free to do whatever you want i don't care what you do just don't break the law and if you do what do i always say again don't tell no i'm kidding listen i love you and thank you for being so good and let's just continue to praise the lord amen dear lord i thank you for uh, pastor farmer and his family uh, bless them and uh, bless us as we in, enter into this week I pray that you would uh, just protect us and keep us. Arm us in your full armor and may the fruits of your spirit be manifest in us uh, more and more each day. And uh, show us opportunities to share your gospel as well. And I pray all these things in Jesus' name. Amen. <laughs> 